Hi, I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! Welcome back to Lady Parts TV. Um, we are not going to do a podcast next week. We're going to have a hiatus of one week. So, uh, But we will have a lesbian movie club for you, uh, courtesy of Bridget, who bought a lesbian movie club. So that will be posted Saturday instead of the podcast. And um, we're going to tell you enough things to keep you going for the next two weeks because we have things coming this week and next week. So... It might um, not keep you completely going, but it, it's... No, what I mean is it's, some, some of these things are premiering this week, some of them are premiering uh, next week. Some of them we would have kept for next week's podcast. I was say, because it's not an extensive had had. list. No, it's not, but it's a good one, mm-hmm. I think. It is. Uh, some, some fun... Strangely uh, so. Yeah, some fun things. Um, we have to start with the stats, and uh, we, have, <laughs> <laughs> we have to apologize. We only tallied the six primetime shows, and that has we have, we have a very good reason for it. And the reason is we've been binge- <laughs> we've been binging on my extensive and exhaustive Wendy Crewson folder. Yes, things um, we've seen and not seen before. Well, things that I mostly have seen and yeah. I'm, I'm happy to introduce to you. But but we've uh, even watched things we've both seen. Uh, yeah, uh, it's been fun. Yeah, it's it really great. has been fun. And also, I have watched things you know that I watch. Uh, I watch uh, uh, who's got who. America's bring got the talent. funny America's Got Talent. All those but, but we don't count things. those shows. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like we've just been sitting in front of a screen like, you know, lunatics just watching Wendy well, Cruz. A little but, bit. But <laughs> Listen, out of the, what, she has about 140 credits. And we've watched, credits. you know, House Hunters and Mexico yeah. Life and <laughs> those kinds of now, shows. Now, don't tell them too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but other uh, out of the six shows that we did tally, written or co-written by women is four, which is two thirds, six six percent, and directed. That's amazing. And I went directed by a woman too, which is a third, thirty three percent. So I mean, uh, considering the fact that we've only done six, we've done pretty well. Yes, <laughs> well, we should keep it to six. <laughs> no, last week's was so amazing. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to start you off with uh, a completely different review from the review I thought we were going to give this, and it's only based on one episode, but nevertheless, it's the reboot of Beverly Hills 90210. And I thought... (coughs) (coughs) I kind of forced Mimi to watch it with me, and I was fully ready to continue watching without her. I was not a fan in the in its prime because I was busy and I was too old for these kids. Although right. now I do watch things with kids that I enjoy. But well, I wasn't came... busy and I was a uh. kid, so it worked out fine for me. And I mean, you know, I didn't have t-shirts. I may have had a notebook, a notebook or two, but I didn't have t-shirts. But I, I loved the show. and yeah, I watched I, a little. The thing I remember about it is that in Israel, I had just gotten cable. You know, we only had one and a half channels before that. Then we had, we had one channel, then we had one and a half, then we had two channels. So getting cable and getting shows from America was this big thing. And Beverly Hills was different from everything else I'd ever seen. So it was fun. Um, and obviously a lot of kids around the world felt the same way because well, it was Jason a Priestley sensation. Jason was very cute and so was Luke Perry. As you can imagine, those two did not particularly no, appeal to me. they did to me at the time. I, You know what? I didn't have a crush on any of those people. No. no none not, of them were really, really crushable. Well, no. Oh, are you kidding? Shannon Doherty Jen, and Jenny Garth, Jenny Garth were was huge. very cute, but still... Not people, oh, there were people were huge fans. No, I didn't actually. But um, anyway, so the show was hugely popular in the 90s, and this is uh, 30 years later. And of course, I have to tell you though, I'm actually kind of happy about this wave of reboots. I'm li- reliving my youth, I'm enjoying all this stuff. Um, so they decided that it was time to reboot the show, but. With a very interesting twist. twist. Yes. Let me first give you a bit of the information, just so that it's out of the way. The first episode just aired on Fox. It's a total of six episodes for this season. I don't know if they have any if plans. They'll have of, another season. Yeah. Um, and the, the new episodes air Wednesday at uh, 9 p.m. And it was created by Chris Albergini, Michael, uh, Mike Kessler, Chesler Kessler, um, and T- Tori Spelling and Jenny Garth, who, by the way, are seem Best to be really friends. good friends in real mm-hmm. life. They've done a lot of, they've done reality shows together. They've done show shows together. They, they seem like really nice mm-hmm. people. Um, and it's starring almost everybody. Uh, Gabrielle Carteris, who came out of 
uh, semi-retirement. She's so busy being the president of SAG After. SAG really. After, right? And, and in this, she's the president of Actors, Actors Guild. Actors Guild. <laughs> yes. Um, Jenny Garth, Brian Austin Green, Jason Prisley, Tori Spelling, Ian Ziering, and Shannon Doherty. And there was a very moving and touching, very Tribute. subtle. Very subtle tribute to Luke Perry, and mm-hmm. actually much more subtle than this show usually would have think mm-hmm. would have done. Um, and uh, and I'm so glad they they had to do it, but I'm so glad they were able to. Right, I didn't know if it happened he, in time. Yeah, if it had happened in time, and anyway, he didn't. He wasn't. He didn't want to be part of the show. Right. Uh, but I just didn't see how in the world they could, especially since let he was such go. a huge star, yes. and it was so tragic, uh, so young. Um, so the the twist of this show is that so we I I fully expected a reboot of nine hundred two one zero, seeing where Brendan and where Brenda and Kelly and Donna where they are now, and the show starts, and within the ne- the first five minutes, you realize, wait a second, this is a show about the actors. <laughs> They're talking about Jenny Garth and Tori Spelling, and so why do I care about the actors? I want to know about the characters, and. The first five minutes, I, I was going to turn to Mimi and say, you know... I had already turned to you <laughs> and said, I, I don't think so. I no. said, if you're going to watch this, you're going to watch this alone. No, but I was going to turn to you and say, you mm-hmm. know, I don't even need to watch the first episode myself. But I decided to give it yes, some more time because did. oftentimes what I find is that shows need time. Yes, we have to be fair. At yeah. Least go watch an entire episode, unless it's something we just know we're going to hate so much. Yeah. Um, I mean, if a dog gets killed in yes, the first five first, minutes. Exactly. I was going to say a baby, but a dog too. Yes. <laughs> a dog even more, right? Um, so, but the, the, so the trick about this show is that it is a reboot within the reboot. So with, within the first episode, Jenny, well, Tori really, but Tori and Jenny decide to, that it's time, 30 to years re- later, to reboot the show. It starts, the, the, the season, the episode starts with a cast reunion, a 30-year-old, a 30-year cast reunion, right, with all the fans. And the t-shirts and the drama and um it's it's very very self-reflexive it mocks itself mm-hmm. the characters are very i mean the people themselves i mean the, it's characters who are actually real they're actors. very good sports about uh, they're extremely good sports they, they, just, they poke just fun at themselves absolutely at each other themselves it's very and, self-deprecating mm-hmm. and it's very um it's just it's very way, sober. It's, charming. it's very sober because you, it, there are, there's a lot of there are a lot of things there that you know we when we were fans of this show in the 90s they all looked so glamorous mm-hmm. and living such amazing lives both of the characters and the actors because you would thought oh my god they're so popular mm-hmm. they're so beloved and then you realize you know 30 years later where they've been what's what's happened to them because of that show it seems in a lot of ways they were like the cheerleader the hometown cheerleader and the jock uh, and the jock <laughs> yeah who who don't sort of reach potentials. Well, and and the the show did change their lives mm-hmm. considerably for better or worse in some cases. Completely. So it's it's very very interesting. One of the things that I love the most and uh, that are of interest to our audience and specific specifically is that we all I think many of us anyway thought that Andrea Zuckerman should have been gay and Gabrielle Carter's his character. Mm-hmm. Andrea Zuckerman is the character, right? Right. <clears throat> um, we, we, I think in today's world, if the show had been done now, she probably would have been mm-hmm. gay. Um, and the, they, they do a nod to it, which I hope they actually go with for a full storyline. Because she is married and has grandchildren. But what I love about it, it's not Andrea, it's Gabrielle. Gabrielle. So they're not even doing the lesbian flirtation with Andrea. They're doing it with Gabrielle, which I thought was really, really great. And, and a, it was very well done. Yeah, and a very, very nice nod to the fans. Acknowledging something that today would have been different, and I love that. And Andrea herself uh, makes a little comment that makes you realize. Gabrielle. Yeah. <laughs> it's very confusing that way. Gabrielle <laughs> act, makes a, a, says, has a remark that makes you realize that they it was a sub. Yes, that they sub-plot. actually. I mean, they, it was it, under we, the skin. We didn't make it, it up. Subcutaneous. I tend to think, and by the way, if you haven't seen the movie The Celluloid Closet, I highly recommend it. I tend to think that a lot of the time when we queer read something, which means that we see a lesbian or a gay or any queer kind of a subtext that's supposedly not there, it's there. It's there. It's there. We're just, they're just somebody didn't get approval from an executive or somebody didn't think it would go over well in the belt, you know, the, it's there. Um, so I really liked that. And actually, it was really much, much better than we had expected. Yes, it really was. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And, uh, it you had even a, intend to watch more, right? It had some heart. Uh, it was funny. And, it was very uh, re- realistic. I, I never cared about any of these people. 
Uh, but I care about them a little bit now, yeah. which is very interesting. It I humanizes did. them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it makes them, makes them more relatable, and I think that uh, it makes them very vulnerable. Um, I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. I, I appreciate this interesting way of doing yes, this reboot. Yes, it's quite original, so it's called, which is the last thing I expected it to be. And I just want to tell you what it's called because I, I forgot to say what it's called now. It's called BH90210. So just so you know. And again, it's on Fox Wednesdays, only six episodes. So check it out, really. Whether you were a fan or you weren't, I'm sure you were aware of it. Something you can still get for free somewhere without having oh, to... Oh, because uh, it's not on the streaming service. Yeah, it's on Fox. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and now we have a film review for you. Um, yeah, we have an odd little film for you. Uh at first glance, it would not seem to be anything that really falls under our purview, and it really doesn't. But well, it, but for the fact that it's just, we get sometimes the opportunity to review films that that sound interesting enough or seem to have something enough that it doesn't matter that it's not about women. But it is by about women. It's, it's, yes, as a it's, woman who's very prominent. There are two women, it, but two it's, women, it's, yeah. I think it's actually three women. I think it's uh, it's equally divided between the sexes. So as long as it's not overly masculine, right. as long as it's equal, then yes, I think it's Yes, but at first so glance, it's not something that we would immediately uh, no, pick. No, but, but it's, it's a very... A very interesting, very original, yeah. and I think it's is it based on truth. It, it's inspired by a true story. Yes. Uh, it's um, yeah. Well, anyway, it's called. Did we say Ode to Joy? Ode to Joy, uh, directed by Jason uh, Weiner, I believe, and written by Max Werner. Um, it stars uh, Martin Freeman, Morena Baccarin, looking adorable, <laughs> uh, Jake Lacey, Jane Curtin, Melissa Rauch, Melissa Rauch, who you might know from uh, The Big Bang Theory. Right? Uh, Shannon Woodward and Adam Shapiro. And it's about a guy uh, who he has a condition. Uh, it's a very rare condition. Rare condition called cataplexy. Mm-hmm. And when he feels too much emotion, especially joy, joy really is the thing that sets him off, he he sort of loses control of his muscles. He really p- passes out. It's, what it's, he usually it's does is narcolepsy. Faint, it's actually narcolepsy. But so, it's brought on by right by too much feeling and right. especially joy. So so it starts off. You have, you see him doing everything he can to to block out. He can't look at people puppies. walking dogs, puppies, <laughs> people with babies and strollers. When he like goes out goes to work, he wears. Headphones and with uh, funeral with, requiems. Yes, really. <laughs> terrible music. Uh, um, he goes to d- depressing, depressing plays. Um, he, of course, hasn't had a relationship for God knows how long. His brother is Jake Lacey, who is darling and sweet and understanding, highly protective, but very protective of him, and kind of goofy. He's very sweet. He's very good. He's very good. Yes, uh, Martin Freeman is an actor who usually plays weird little characters. Um, he just plays. An ordinary man here, and Morena Baccarin is the the irrepressible woman who he falls in love with, and who falls in love with him, and it's how they try to um, navigate this this problem, this this inability to fall in love with someone, feel joy, have sex, do the things that you know normal people do, so that he won't continually pass out and the thing about him passing out by the way which sounds on the surface it sounds like kind of bizarre but it's actually very dangerous he actually yes. the first time they she suggests that they go to her place and the suggestion suggests sex yes he is on her stoop, stoop and he faints and falls down and hits his head and it's a very da- it's a very dangerous yes, situation he has, he has to go to the hospital i mean and also i mean you know it's just very sad to think of a person who does everything to to avoid joy to because avoid joy. joy can be harmful to him, and uh, it's it's a very original and different take of the general romantic comedy. Exactly, it's and very funny. Everybody is very good. It's very well written. It's I mean, there's some very there's a lot of subtleties, very good jokes, and uh, good writing, and wonderful board for board. Uh, wonderful performances. I love, by the way, that it was age appro- the couples were age appropriate because that always bothers yes. me when there's a man in his fifties and a woman in her twenties, and they're supposed that there's no, 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 no. It doesn't bother me when it's the actual couple. Yeah, it bothers me that they they always pair an older woman with a younger woman no, no. because an like, older man with a an older woman. man with <laughs> <laughs> yes, a little Freudian here, yes, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> a little self-referential. <laughs> 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 a 
meta, very meta. Um, when they, because, you know, because it's like, you know, uh, a, a romantic... It makes the guy look good. Well, and because the woman, a romantic love interest could not be played by a woman over 30, usually, in these movies, and I hate that. So mm-hmm. I like it when the couple is very age-appropriate, and in, in this case, they are very... They are. Uh, it's a very charming movie. It is. I and liked it, it, and I recommend it. It's a... Uh, uh, in theaters now, and it's on digital and on demand Friday, August well, 9th. Well, uh, now, right now. now. Oh, yeah. today's Friday. If, if they release oh, my it's... God. How could it already be August 9th? <laughs> they really... Well, happy birthday, Whitney. I wish you were still here. Mm-hmm. Um, in theaters, uh, they release it in theaters and on digital and on demand at the same time. And I, I highly recommend it. It was a very, very, very different and original movie and very well yeah, made. if you have to pay a few bucks for it and you just want to watch something unusual and fun and light... This is a very good choice. Ode to Joy. Now we have a series of heads ups for you. And the first one, it's the second season of a Netflix show called Mind Hunter. Uh, the second season premieres on Netflix Friday, August 16th. And if you haven't watched the first season, it gives you just enough time to go and binge on the first season. Um, it's created by Joe Perhal. Perhal. Perhal and starring like. Anna Tor. Jonathan Groff and Holt Kalani. When did we mention Kalani? Anna Torf? <laughs> <laughs> I, I put her at the beginning, even though she's not really the lead, but she's the lead for our purposes. For our purposes. And this is uh, based on the 1996 book uh, from the man who invented profiling mm-hmm. uh, in the FBI. And what profiling is, is that they go into serial killers and, and criminals' minds. Well, this is how they do it here. Well, 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 yes, the whole, in general, the whole but, method of profiling. Right. What he did, and this is what the series is about, it starts in the 70s, I believe. Uh, it, he he interviewed many, many serial killers, like really the worst, the worst. Ser- you know, historically big serial killers in order to understand their mind and in order to be able to understand the next serial mm-hmm. killer and catch the next serial killer. And uh, it's fascinating. It very, very interesting, intelligent uh the conversations that that he has with these people, it really is fascinating. As as people who, I mean, listen, I don't think we're the only ones. There are many, many shows out there about profiling and FBI and, and catching serial, serial killers. killers. And mm-hmm. So obviously it's something that fascinates people. And here you get the chance to really go into the how that how the mind of a serial killer works and um Anna Torv uh a little just a little uh added, just a bonus, little added bonus for us um she's a lesbian and in the first season that's only hinted at or like you know mentioned in passing it seems like in the in the second season she's actually getting a relationship yes so that's another good reason to want to see it. But really, it's a very, no, very no, good No, no, it's show. not enough reason to want to see it. But I didn't say it was enough a reason. It's I a said very, it was a bonus. It's a bonus. It yeah. is, really. And for Anna Torv fans, I'm sure that would yes. be plenty of reason. But the good news is, is you a, get a really good show. A good anyway, show. Anyway, yeah. Um, so Mind Hunter, the second season premieres on Netflix August 16th. And not I highly light, recommend Not light comedy. Not <laughs> no, no. Not Ode to Joy. But highly fascinating. Very fascinating. So now there's another new series, and this comes from Mark Cherry, which is um, very exciting. And, and I just want to preface and say, this is going to be on CBS All Access. Ugh. We are not recommending you pay for CBS All Access. We are just recommending the show. Yes. You will decide whatever your conscience well, may allows you well, to decide. Well, if you haven't already done it, used it for Desperate Housewives... I know no, Desperate Housewives. Um, the Good Fight. The Good Fight. I'm thinking of Desperate Housewives. Or Star Trek. Or, Star, you know, for any yeah. of those things. They do offer a, a free Right, month so and, wait until... Uh, wait until it's over and then you can binge. Yeah. I just want to... Because the only reason I said I would never... Uh, it's just because CBS does not deserve right. extra money. They right, are, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, advocating for you to steal it or anything. I'm just saying... Make your own mind up as to whether or not you think you want to give them your dollars because... I wouldn't. But the show, which is why it pisses me off that so many good shows land on CBS All Access. It looks like so much fun. It stars Lucy Liu. Wait, it's called? Oh, it's called. Uh, did, didn't I say this? Oh, Why Women Kill. And there are so many reasons. But in this, <laughs> it's mostly infidelity. Right. Uh, cheating husbands. Uh, and it stars, as I said, Lucy Liu, who is one of my all-time favorite Tiny goddesses. <laughs> she is tiny. Um, Jennifer Goodwin and Kirby Howell Baptiste, uh, who you might know from uh, The Good Place. And three women living in three different decades. There's a housewife from the 60s, 
a socialite in the 80s. Who is and Lucy, that's Lucy Lou. And she's so do, delicious. She's delicious. She's very shallow and divine. <laughs> but I think we will oh, find there are, I'm sure there many, are. many layers oh, once yes. we get through it because you wouldn't waste Lucy Lou's um, obvious intelligence uh, on someone who's just you know, so shallow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, a lawyer, Kirby in- Hall Baptiste character is a lawyer in, uh, 2018. 2018. And they are, as we said before, dealing with infidelity in their marriage. And the sad thing is, is because they're in three different decades, they don't actually intersect. Yeah, they never inter- intersect. Yeah, intersect. I mean, they don't Which intersect. is too bad. They, they, it would have been I think fun. Have a, they have a lot in common. <laughs> um, and it looks delightful. It, it looks, looks just a little bit trashy as Mark Cherry, it, who, by the way, it you looks know, very Mark Cherry, Desperate Housewives. But it's a little dark, mm-hmm. and it looks very, very funny. And it's, of course, bright colors, uh, all of that, uh, again, Desperate period Housewife. Period, too. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, period. Uh, although, De- Desperate Housewives. No, no, I'm saying this is period. This, yeah. this, mm-hmm. Until the play, last. They get to play with the periods, yeah, like, too, which yeah. is always fun. Mm-hmm. And Mark Cherry loves to write for women. Well, he does, and he does it beautifully. And we just watched a, a trailer, and we laughed and enjoyed it, and uh, said, "Okay, we're we're we we'll got see. A, we'll see." <laughs> yeah, uh. but but uh, I just want to say there are two um, LGBT uh, storylines. Oh, right. So okay. Lucy Liu's husband in the in the uh, her character's husband has a, uh, actually turns out to be. So it's all about women whose husband cheat, cheat. on cheat on them, and uh, he cheats on her with men. Mm-hmm. And the uh, current uh, character, uh, Kirby Hal Baptiste character she's in an open marriage with her husband and she uh has, has an affair a, with, a, with woman. a woman so these are also particularly exciting for me um why women kill why uh, women kill premieres on cbs all they don't kill because of streaming services <laughs> <laughs> but they give could. them time uh <laughs> cbs all access on thursday august 15th this is actually a nice trajectory from for lucy lou from that time she played a murderous wife in chicago so, oh yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we hopefully will be able to review it once it's out. And uh, finally, our, our last uh, heads up is for a new film starring Kate Blanchett. Should I just stop here? You I could. almost could. I could. Uh, it's called Where'd You Go, Bernadette? Uh, in theaters Thursday, August fifteenth, uh, from the uh, director of Boyhood, uh, Richard, Richard Lin- Linklater, Linklater mm-hmm. who also wrote it with Holly Gent or Gent and uh, Vincent Palmo, and it's based on a novel by Maria uh, Simola. the The novel apparently was a huge bestseller, and it's starring Kate Blanchett, Kristen Wiig, Judy Greer, Lawrence Fishburne, Billy Crudup, and um, it's about this. A woman, uh, Bernadette Fox, who for a long time... Uh, she was a, an she was architect. A, well, for a long time she was, I think, just a, a mother and a housewife. But her creative juices were becoming destructive because they had nowhere to go. And she was a whore and her neighbors hated her. And she just needed to do yeah, something. She, she, she was a nasty bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she she will, did awful well, things. Well, as Lawrence Fishburne tells her, you, you are the kind of person who if you don't do something with those creative energies, you know, they become destructive. And so she des- devises a plan to run away from home and go all the way to Antarctica where she has this huge project. And this is a tour de force for Kate Blanchett. I mean, every single frame. I, I saw think. Kate Burton in the trailer. So yes, Kate Burton. I hope she has a little something to do. Yeah, I think she's the the one who sends her to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Um, I, this is a very different role for Kate. Unfortunately, she uses an American accent, which to me is a yes, waste it of always, her. It always yeah. is. Oh, come on, just talk the way you talk. Yeah, it's so sexy. I know, but uh, she has a very good, true to the character. But she always does an accept, exceptional. Yes, she American has a really good American accent, accent. and. Um, it just, I really do think she's in every frame. It looks fabulous. She looks like she had so much fun doing this role. Um, and I just can't wait to see it. No, I think it's going to be delight, a delight for everybody so who loves it. So we're going to have to find out where'd you go, Bernadette, by seeing <laughs> the movie. Right. Uh, so again, it's premiering in theaters Thursday, August 15th. And I'm sure we will all want and to see it. And let me just repeat the words. Kate, Kate Blanchett. Blanchett. <laughs> so... Thank you for joining us for another yes, podcast. Indeed. Again, we will not be here next week, but we will the following week. For, so make sure to join us and make sure to check out Saturday uh, next Saturday for the Lesbian Movie Club. <laughs> and don't forget to go to our blog on our website, ladypartstv.com, and pick up your Lady Parts TV Awards ballot. You're going to really want to vote. It's going to be a fun show, and you're going to have a say. 
Yeah, you are it. You choose. And who is the best this year on television? Exactly. We are being only we are, women. Of we're course, we're providing. <laughs> yes, we we're didn't. we're providing the alternative to the Emmys, which have really pissed us off, as they do very so often. Um, so not the, that they didn't have some excellent choices, which we have included, but they had some enormous oversights. Yes, enormous. And uh, the deadline to submitting your filled out ballot is August nineteenth. So uh, time is uh, of oh, the, the essence. essence. So get on our blog and do it, Lady Parts. TV at gmail.com. You can always email us about anything. And anything yes, if, even though we're not here with a, a, a blog, a, a, a podcast. podcast next week, uh, if there's something you hear about and maybe want to know if we've heard anything about it or what we think. If you want to bring something to right our attention, away. oftentimes yeah. we we mm-hmm. take you know we take your suggestions and uh, we're always happy. I mean, you know, even though all, most of the time we're on top of things, we miss things. I mean, there's so there's much. so much, and so. we are only two women. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you in in, in two weeks. Bye. Bye.